Hi, I'm Kate Bagnall and I'm the Museum Collections Manager here at the Society, responsible for the access, movement, storage, preservation and display of the circa 40,000 museum objects we have here with us at Burlington House. Our London home is one of our two accredited museum sites, with the other being Kelmscott Manor in the Cotswolds, the former summer home and rural idyll of William Morris. As the cases behind me indicate, the Society's collection is incredibly diverse, and this is because the Society was founded before the British Museum, the National Gallery and the National Portrait Gallery, and so in its early days, before national collections were even envisaged, it was seen as the most suitable place to house objects of antiquity, archaeology, art, documentation and books. Our early fellows were also ahead of their time in offering a safe home to objects that were considered little more than valueless curiosities in their desire to preserve and document our national past. As a result, the Society's core collection here at Burlington House spans from the prehistoric period to the 19th century and predominantly covers the history, archaeology and art of the British Isles. Likewise, a core element of the Society's collections relates to its own history and development and we have a small collection of world culture as material. Nestled safely in their drawers and boxes and displayed around the building, we have around 2,000 diverse prehistoric artefacts including flint, stone, pottery, coins and figurines. The collection by AWG Lothar of Egyptian shabti, amulets, beads and seals from the first late intermediate period. Romano British material including pottery and metal tools and weapons and this lovely little flying phallus from Dunstable. Later archaeological objects including household items, arms and armour and this set of keys found beneath the foundation stone of Old London Bridge when building New London Bridge. And a number of medieval antiquities including metalwork, glass and ceramics, sculpture, architectural elements and religious artefacts including this beautiful gilt bronze processional cross dating from the 15th century. This cross is thought to have featured in the Battle of Bosworth, the ultimate fight that brought the War of the Roses to an end with the defeat of Richard III and the crowning of Henry Tudor as Henry VII. The cross would be mounted on a wooden shaft and carried by Richard III's supporters and we know this because of the sunburst motif appearing on the reverse of the roundels on the back of the cross. This motif was an emblem of the House of York and its supporters. We have a small horological collection of eight clocks that are still all in working order and displayed around the building. Eighty-five subject and portrait paintings, that's royal portraits, portraits of antiquaries, devotional and topographical works, including a collection of 16th century panel paintings of medieval and Tudor monarchs, some of which represent the earliest surviving images of British rulers. To give you an idea, here we have our gilded archtop portrait of Richard III, the earliest surviving known portrait of the Yorkist King, our cusped archtop portrait of Henry VII, and our 1554 Hans Aworth portrait of Mary I, the first major portrait to be painted after her coronation, all given to the Society by the Reverend Thomas Kerridge in 1828. 11,000 seal casts, matrices and impressions, including this great seal of Henry VIII and this great seal of Elizabeth I. 25,000 prints and drawings commissioned and collected by the Society, including this now famous cowdery engraving, entitled the encampment of the British near Portsmouth. The original image appeared in the form of a wall painting at Cowdery House, the former home of Sir Anthony Brown, master of the horse to Henry VIII. When the society became aware that the painting still survived, the Sherwin brothers, who specialised in historic engravings, were commissioned to take a record of this and four other wall paintings. They were copied in watercolour in 1775, with detailed engravings produced soon after. The interior of Cowdery House was then destroyed by fire shortly afterwards, and so the Society's engravings provide the only record of their appearance. Finally, we hold objects associated with William Morris and the Arts and Crafts movement, including this beautiful set of 72 bookbinding tools, designed and owned by William Morris and used to produce the decorative leather binding of the Kelmscott Press Chaucer. Our long plotted history has provided us with truly magical and diverse museum collections which we hold for the public and we hope that this introduction to the collections will encourage you to explore the museum further.